Hey guys, it's May May and my trusty sidekick. Yep, old Vinny's here. <laughs> your, your name is changing to Yep a lot, like every time. You're well, like, I mean, you know, Yep. What you want me to do? So, hello everyone, come on in. Today, Vince, we are making a card that is taking the internet by storm. Sort taking of. Taking it by storm. It sort of is. Here's what's happened. Mm. Um, it's a really cool kind of thing. I don't know who actually um, found, I don't, I'll tell you the story in a second. So this this card was posted on our May May Made It and So Did I Facebook page, and people have gone crazy over it. And I'm like, if I don't do a tutorial, my email is going to blow up <laughs> because I keep hearing from people, please make the impossible card. So you want to hear something really cool about the it? The impossible card. It's called the impossible card. But the interesting thing is it's actually from a card trick called the hyper card. Now, this is what's so cool is I did a little research. So here's what's funny. What happens is, it's a, it's from an optical illusion, okay? And the idea behind it is, you take a playing card and you do this cut we're gonna do, and when you're done, you say to the person, so how do you think I put these holes on either side, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole card trick. But what happened was, somebody picked this up and went, I can make a greeting card out of this. So that's super cool for somebody to do that. I love when we do like that, right? But the original card is called the Hyper Card. You can look that up, check it out. Um, it's interesting because I remember seeing it when my son used to do magic back in the day. So now they're making this card. Now here's why people like it. This is a five by seven version. Today I'm gonna to show you some other versions. This is the five by seven version. And this little piece lays down and goes into an envelope. Now, as you can see, my little mortarboard pops out the top. This won't fit in a five by seven because I went above the top, but if you stay inside, if you just decorate to there, this will fit in a five by seven envelope. When the person gets it, it pops up. It's the easiest card you've ever made and it gives you lots and lots of options, okay? So why did you make it not fit? Um, well, the other ones I did, I just thought it was cute to have that pop up. And if you're just taking somebody, this is kind of fun to go, congratulations. Oh, kind of cute. Okay. All right, look, here's what I did. The five by seven is the one that's taking the world by storm, okay? Everybody's making the five by seven. Well, y'all know me. I'm not a five by seven card maker. I'm an A2 card maker. So I decided to make us an A2 version of what? the card so that you guys could already have all your measurements done. And so you're going to get the A2 measurements, the five by seven measurements, but I couldn't stop there. Oh, no. Say it ain't so. I also made you a six by six version. <laughs> I think the 6x6 six six ver version is the spank. Let me tell you why, okay? The spank? The spank, and let me tell you why. That's pretty serious. You can take a piece of paper out of any of your paper pads and turn it into the cutest card. Say the it cutest. Ain't so, so easy, okay? Say it ain't so, my man. But I'm going to step it up again. <laughs> oh, no. Come on now. Just don't push the envelope too I'll far. <laughs> push the envelope. Ha, ha, ha. I get it. Arr, arr, arr. I'm going to show you today how you can take any cardstock any size and make this impossible card base so if you are in other parts of the country i did a um i did a poll on not a poll really i asked a question on my facebook group about the different sizes of cards made in the different parts of the world well i was kind of hoping <laughs> there was like a oh we use this over here and we use this over here kind of answer but there's really not it's kind of like there's so many different sizes. So here's what I thought I would do, is I'm gonna show you how to make them no matter what size cards you use, okay? It's easy, let's let's get started. Oh, and also, on the blog today, all of these, <laughs> matter of fact, I need to make that blog live. Uh, Amanda, if you're watching, could you go make that blog live for me? So if anybody wants to go to the blog right now, they can go ahead and see the sizes and the templates for these. But I'm just going to give you a glimpse of those real quick. Tony <clears throat> said I sound like an infomercial. <laughs> for, the, for the low, low price of free today. Okay, let's start with an A2. This is the template for the A2 size. When you get to the blog, okay, there's a photo of this. So these are your measurements for the A2. Don't stress about that right now. I'm going to show you, how, I'm gonna show you what we have to do to get there. But this way you'll know your measurements, okay? This is the 5 by 7 That template photo is also on the blog. You can get it that way. This, I actually was inspired to do the five by seven by two different websites, and I have linked them in the blog. One is Trimcraft, and one was called, oh Lord, I forgot it. Uh, making it crafty? I'm not sure, it's on the blog. I will have to make sure I give them credit, and I'll put it in the description below after this is through being live. This is the six by six, and I made a mistake and wrote six by six down here. I should have written it up here, but you know, give me a pass on that one. So this is the six by six. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to use this piece of card to do this, but it works for every piece of card that you're going to do. 
This is actually an A6 card base, which means it's four and a half by six and a quarter. Okay, here's how you do this. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks, so just bear with me, because I'm going to make this like, I'm going to take all the mystery out of this impossible card. You know what? This card is impossibly simple. Well, that's what I was just fixed to ask you, because Steph said she just made 10 of these cards this week, and it's silly easy It's impossibly simple. It is so simple. So and I'm even going to make it so easy. Why does the word impossible even come into it if it's okay. that easy to make? I challenge you guys to go look at the impossible card, the hyper deck impossible playing card and read the comments people make about this is easy. This is easy. Why is this so, why do you call it hard? Whatever. It looks very easy. The trick is when it was the um, optical illusion, it was the way it looked and the question you asked that got you. Uh -oh. <coughs> the problem is when you see a trick, a magic trick done, it's no longer magic. You see what I'm saying? When, it's hard to describe that, but that's how it works. Okay, so let me show you this. And I'm not I'm not doing a lot of personal chat right now today because this is a popular video and I don't want to chat too long. I want people to get the instructions so they can move on. We can chat at the end. Okay? okay so just just to let you know. Question. Baby's doing great. Thank y'all for asking. She's in the incubator. <laughs> but I don't want to... I, I know people are going to know this, so we're not going to interrupt this. Okay? So now we are getting started. I'm probably going to have to put a link to where we start. Okay? All right. C6, I mean, A6 size card works with any card. The first thing you're going to do is establish a center line on the horizontal part of your card, okay? So this is a four and a half inch wide card. So I need to mark this at two and a quarter. Now I'm going to show you something. If you have one of these handy little cutting mats, here's how you do this. It's so easy. I'm going to put this into the squares. See, I have it lined up nice and even inside those squares. I'm going to count one inch, two inch, and a quarter, which is the middle. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the same down here. What I can do is use my ruler to help me get that quarter mark because I can line the one quarter inch inside my ruler up on that two inch line here. And that moves me to two and a quarter. Does that Look make sense? There. Did it make sense when I said it? Yeah. All right. So I'm using your little um, cutting mat makes it super easy. Okay. So, um, oh, I did that sideways. <laughs> I'm off. I'm doing that again. Let me do it this way where I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to line up the same way. I'm going to move in one, two, and a quarter of an inch. I'm going to use my ruler to help me get that quarter because I'm just lining this quarter of an inch line up at the two inch mark. And now I can make that line much more centered there now that I'm looking at it the right way. All right, we're going to do another center mark. Super easy. Ready for this? This side is six and a quarter. So this is where you have a little bit of an issue because you've got to split an eighth. No big deal, really. Well, you got to split a quarter. Well, you got to make an eighth, I should say. Split a quarter. So half of six is what? Three. And half of a quarter is what? One eighth. Very good. So we need to mark this at three and one eighth. You can do it the same way. I'm, I'm a lazy crafter, okay? So you see how I've got an eighth of an inch hanging over here, an eighth of an inch hanging over here, and then I would go right down the middle line. But I want to show people who can't do it that way. I'm going to put my ruler down on the card. And then at, at um, three and one eighth, I'm going to make a mark, okay? And if you really need to be specific, do it top and bottom. I'm not a huge fan of these measure, mark, measure, mark. That's why I try to make that. Oh, I don't, I don't need to do bottom. You can do it. Don't stress about that. Just do what I did. Just do it at the top. Don't stress about the bottom. All right. Now, lining your card up on your little cut mat to make sure it's nice and straight, I want you to run your ruler down again. And we're just going to make that mark. But this time, we're only going to mark it to that middle line we made. So here's the deal, okay? Any card base that you use in your country will work. You're going to split it in half one way, okay? And then you're going to make a mark from the top to that halfway mark you made in the middle. Does that make sense? It's so easy. So you find the center here to this point and the center here all the way across. Now, here's where you get to have a little freedom, a little play time. And a lot of people don't like this, and some people do. So I'm going to let you decide how you want to do it, okay? This little leg that we're going to make here, you get to decide how big you want it. I just kind of did it in a ratio that I wanted. And like on a card this long, because it's six and a quarter, I'd probably do maybe an inch and a quarter of a line. So let's just see what that looks like. Inch and a quarter? Mm. Yeah, that should be okay. I'm going to do it at inch and a quarter. So we'll make a mark here. And again, we're just going to run that inch and a quarter line all the way to the middle line we made. 
and I'm using my ruler to help me get straight. That's what I love about these rulers, having that mark on the inside, you can see. By the way, after I finish, I'll put a photo of this on the blog so you have a um, A6 as well, and so you won't have to do all the measuring. I'm just trying to show you how no matter what size card you use in what country you live in, this is how you establish this impossible card situation. It's easy. It's not impossible at all. Let me get this square again. And I'm going to have to do this the other way because I'm kind of a nut about that. So I can line this up and get it straight along that edge and to the middle line. All right, there's your marks. Now real quick, before we go any further, I'm gonna um, Sharpie this in so you guys can see it real well. And the Sharpie matters. I'm gonna show you why in a second. So what I'm gonna do is line my ruler up on those marks I've made here, okay? And then here, trust me, the Sharpie matters because I'm fixing to make life so easy with this card. Because look, you don't wanna do this work every time you wanna make a card, right? You don't want to do all this measuring and stuff. Oh. No. You that's want to have... We're going to make a template, right? That's, we're going to make a template. There is no way we're doing this 900 times, okay? So this is the A6 card, all right? And I knew I was going to make this with you guys watching, so... This line here is 3 and 1 eighth, okay? This is 1 and 1 fourth. This is 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how to make the template, which makes life easy. All right, take your skizzers. Not your scissors, you need skizzers, okay? It's important. If you have scissors, best, best, they're not gonna work. You need skizzers. That line in the middle is just a reference line. Don't stress about it. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm coming in to my mark, all right? I'm gonna basically cut away that Sharpie line that I made. Does that make sense if I say that? I've cut on one side of the Sharpie, now I'm gonna cut on the other side of the Sharpie. Right up to that middle line, okay? And I'm gonna get rid of this little piece right here. I don't need that little piece I cut out. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna cut one side of the Sharpie line off, and then I'm gonna cut one side, the other side of the Sharpie line off. I'm spending the time on this one time. I'm never gonna to have to do this again. I'm just gonna use this as my template. It's making sense to you, that's good. It is. <laughs> Now here's, you so far. But here's where you're going to have an issue. If you do this right the first time, no stress the next time, okay? You want to make sure that you cut this side at the 3 and 1 8 spot, okay? Watch this. We're going to come right here. This is 3 and 1 8 in. I'm going to cut right here. This lets me know that when I make my trace line on my template, that's the one I want to trace, not the one I'm cutting away here. That'll make sense when we do our template. All right. This now, or when we do our tracing, this now is a template, and you never have to do any of that stuff again. All these guys I showed you earlier are templates. See this? These will now go into my stash. And whenever I get ready to make one, boom, done. Right? All right. Let's, let's you want to make an A2 one? Or you want to make a, I could just do several of them. I'm just, I'm just going to show you the base, and then we'll talk about how I decorated it, Okay. Um, let's do this one. I've never made this size card before. Let's do this one. So let me find some cardstock. And I love using double-sided cardstock for this. It is so fun because you get two different, you know, two different looks. This is a cute one. So this, you know what I'm going to do too, because I don't use this one very much. I'm going to go ahead and write the dimensions of this one down. Four and a half by six and a quarter. That way, when I do this again, I know what size I need to cut. I'd probably do that on all of my bases if I weren't real familiar with those bases. All right, four and a half, six and a quarter. Probably could take some questions now. I think we're to the point where I've, I got us pretty explained pretty well. I think he twos in yet. Okay, we did have one question. Mm -hmm. um, Carolyn asked, are those first two cuts V-shaped? No, no V-shapes. So you're, like v. you're literally just cutting the Sharpie mark away. That's all you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and that's just to make your template, remember. But to make the actual card, you're going to do what I'm fixing to do here. All right. This makes life easy. We have our template. We come into our room. We're like, I need to make a card for a friend of mine. I think I'll make it an A6. I think I'll make the impossible card. I'm going to get out my template. Boom. I'm going to trace this. Done I'm deal. tracing this side here. Then I'm going to trace this side here. Then remember how I told you this mattered? 
you need to trace the one that is three eighths of an inch long. Don't trace the side we cut away. That makes sense now, doesn't it? Ooh. Watch this. Here's your card making. You're gonna slice these lines. Making the template makes slice makes lice makes life easy. Lice is never easy. <laughs> All mamas out there are going, no, it's not. Okay. So you're just gonna slice on those spots. Now, if you've ever worked with those like wooden puzzles or um the fancy impossible puzzle kind of things. This is kind of how this works. Like if you're gonna make paper longer, y'all seen those videos where you can make a piece of paper to be a square, you can step through. This is a similar way to how they do it. All right, you've got this done. See how I'm holding my hands? I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna twist it back. Was that impossible? No, I'll answer for you. Let's do it again. Man, I'm just watching and listening at the same time. I'm going to take my right hand, holding my left hand still. I'm going to twist this back and put it down on my table. See that? Nothing. Nothing to that. Then what I'm going to do, this is where I want to line things up. So I'm going to take this middle section and meet it up with that little piece there. And I'm going to fold this down flat. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this middle section to the other side, line it up and do the same thing. Now, I, you need to make sure you make your slices all the way to the middle, okay? If you don't, you're going to end up like I just did with a little tiny tear because I didn't make my slice all the way to the middle. But this is how the card ends up when you do that. It does it all on its own, stands up on its own. The questions I've seen at, I've seen. Good job. Did I seen them. The questions I've seen asked are what weight card stock should we use? This is 65 pound and it works great. 110 pound works great. Um, what have I used today? Mostly I've used 65 pound today and it works great. The thing is, once you make this twist, this card is pretty much going to stay there. I'm guessing that the, uh, 80 pound card stock will well, work. Great. Too. Even to be honest with you, I bet even just plain paper would hold up in this shape because of the way it's done. But for a card maker, we use card, right? right, right. Now you're going to decorate this. So here's where it becomes impossible. You see, I have pattern on this side and this pattern, and then I have pattern on this side. The trick is when you're doing this with a playing card, you ask a person, how did I do this without making a cut? How did I do this without going slice and slice? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the like impossible part, but it's not impossible. It's so easy. No, well, the add-ons, if you use thinner paper, but 65 pound, which is probably the thinnest card stock you're going to use is perfect. You can score the middle. I don't think you have to. I think you make that, um, you make your template and there you go. I was going to make this on a scoreboard and then I thought, there's just no reason. If I'm going to do this measuring work, turn it into a template and be done with it, right? Well, I mean, it does make it a lot easier when it comes time to make them. The other thing, scoring the middle does one thing different. It puts a score line here and it puts a score line here. If you're going to map this, that's probably not a big deal. But you don't want to make this any um, any weaker here because you don't want it to tilt over. You want this to stay as flat as you can. Now, here's the deal. Matting these guys can be tricky. So I'm going to show you something. On this 6x6 six six card, okay, I matted this piece with one piece. I had to cut that piece to fit. I had to just make it work, okay? So I cut myself a piece the width I needed it to be for a mat and the height I needed it to be for the mat, and then I cut the L shape away from that. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. But I also found that you can just mat the squares, and it's just as cute, okay? Here, I just matted the square so I'd have a place to write, okay? And then here, I did a little bridge across. This is very popular. If you're watching these Impossible Cards, you're seeing this. You can do anything you want with these guys. Um, the other cool thing is you can extend your decorations out either side as long as you stay inside your six by six or whatever your base is. If all your decorations stay inside your base, you have no problem, okay? And then this stands up when the recipient gets it. But it wouldn't make sense for you to not have it stick off the edge. Well, I don't know. I mean, I could, I would, I try to stay in there because I don't like to have to make special envelopes. You know, if I do, if I, if I need to make a special envelope, I don't have a problem with it, but I don't want that to be my standard. I got to make an envelope for every card I do. So I try to stay in there and I think you can decorate it enough to do that. Let me show you something else you can do. You can get fancy. Where'd that one go? Oh, it hides. You can get fancy. Now listen, this is fancy and high tech. Ready for this? 
You can round the corners. Uh -oh. See the difference? Yes, you can. You can round the corners. <laughs> so see how I rounded every corner that was exposed? Let's do it on that one I just um, cut. That C6 one, here it is. You can round the corners. <laughs> Y'all like how fancy that can get? It's actually very pretty to round the corners. I think it makes it look um, really cool. So you just take every square corner and round it. The only thing you have to remember is when you mat this card, you're gonna need to um, round the corners of your mats as well. Does that make sense? So every corner, so you'll have several here. Any questions how easy this is to do? I mean, it's the easiest card I've made in a long time and I love that it's called the impossible card, that's funny. Well, it so. is kind of ironic. The thing is, you're going to be able to do a lot with it. And um, the other cool thing about it is this. You don't have to tell somebody, hey, that needs to stand up. It kind of will do it for it. Now, it'll probably flatten in an envelope, but when they get it, I think it makes sense, especially the orientation that you make it, you know. Round what, does look great. What paper pack is that for you? Oh, this paper pack is so cute. I'll show you the three I used today, actually. This one is... Let me read the paper. This one is Hello Spring, which I think we have some left. Then the graduation one I used, because I wanted to do different ones. The graduation one is Accolade by um, Authentique. Beautiful paper here. And let me go back to that graduation one, because here's what I did. All of these pieces are from that pack. They're, the only stamping is here where I stamp, We Are Proud of You. That's it. And that's and from the Authentique set? Authentique paper. I cut this out of the little cut-aparts. I cut this out of the cut-aparts. This little stack of books, I fussy cut that. I love it. I think it's so cute. I fussy cut this. This was actually part of another piece, and I cut it off. I love it. Um, this one, so easy to do. This is from the Hello Spring. Again, I used a sticker and popped it up here, okay? This is a big sticker I cut in half and then mounted at the sides like that. And then this is just a little piece I cut with two pieces of paper and cut, put a sticker down. That's it. Pretty cool, right? And then, where's my other one? Where's my A2? Same thing, another paper pack. This one's really simple. I was just really playing with the A2 size, and I just did one quick. So this is just a flower sticker, the other half of the flower sticker, um, a gift. A, this is a birthday wish from all of us, and happy birthday. Cute, right? Another question I get from people, where do you sign them? I would sign them here. This is where I would use for my sentiment, like I did here. But do your thing. This is yours, okay? Do your thing. But uh, again, this is where I would sign them. It's back here on that back flap. These, seriously, y'all are going to make these like crazy because they look different. And if you look online right now, there's not a whole lot of people that have made videos about them. But I thought, why not go ahead and show you guys how to make this work? Like, you can do this with any. You remember how we made those little pie-shaped boxes out of any size cardstock because they were super easy to do? Yeah. It's the same with this. Let me show you one other little trick. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick up... A piece of cardstock. Let me find one that's fairly cut down. Oh, here's one. This is perfect. Okay. So here's, uh, it's not perfect. We'll use it anyway. So I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to trim this little edge off. And whatever size this is, we're going to make it an even number so I don't have to play with little tiny sizes. But let's see. Let's make this even. Okay. Now, what size was the graduation card? Um, the graduation was the 5x7 base. 5x7 base. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut this down to 3 by I don't know, the closest thing is going to be, let's do 5 and a half. That'll be an easy one to split now. So 3 by 5 and a half. okay? So remember, I can make this out of any card because of the technique. So the first thing I have to do is do a middle mark, and this is 1, 2, 3 and a half I did, not 3. So half of 3 and a half is 1 and a 3 quarters. Is that right? One and three quarters? Well, I'm testing you. You're testing me? Or well, I'm testing you? Well, you're doing math. I mean, it's you're before. sleeping over it's there. It's craft math. You're, you're sleeping. It's your card own. math. I can do card math. Well, you don't need to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so half. There's my middle mark for half. Then I want to do the half again. And how long is this dude on this side? What did I say it was? So this is, oh, four and a half. All right, so that's two and a quarter. So I need to mark it at two Look and a at quarter. You. Got it right again. Well, you know, I can do card math. And then, I told you I can do card math. Make my little line from the two and a quarter to the center. This um, lined paper is kind of making life easy on me, to be honest with you. And then I think on this one, I'll come in an inch. No, I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch. Why? Because I can. 
three quarters. Let's come in three quarters on this side. I measure funny on my other side. Y'all probably see that by now. So three quarters. There's my mark. I didn't care what size my cardstock was. And now let's make our slice. So you remember I told you like it doesn't, your base doesn't really matter. It's just the technique is super easy. Super easy. But on the blog, I have photos of my templates so you can get all the measurements. All right, and then we're gonna twist this side. Actually, I think before I twisted it backwards, it doesn't matter as long as you twist one side. So I'm gonna twist it this way this time. As long as you hold one side still and twist the other side, and then do this, and then bring it over here, line them up, fold it down, impossible card. There you go. Any size, any size you wanna make. Ask Taylor, the easiest thing to make in design space ever. It will be the easiest project for design space. If you have any design space skill, you'll be able to do this. It'll be awesome. All right, that is that. Are y'all excited? I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, really. It's super fun, too, right? Because you can do anything um, you want, and you can make any size cards you want. There's the C6. Look how quick we did those. I like when I can take a project and do it any old way I want to do it. That's really cool, which I, you can do that with any project. But I really like how this was like the one I'd seen done, the 5x7, and then you can play and do the 6x6. Six six. The 6x6 six six is so cool to do. I think it's awesome. So, all right, guys, that's it. 26 minutes. Are I showed you, you all those. That was cool. Yeah. No, it was 26 minutes. I did it. Wow. It's super easy. Thank you for ball. Yeah. Um... All the measurements, everybody's asking what measurements. I'm going to put them all on the blog for you guys. I've already put them there. Go to maymaymadeit.com, okay? There's your 5 by 7 photo. They're all out there on the blog, okay? There's your 6 by 6 and here's your A2. And I'm going to add, I'm going to go in and add the, um, C, the A6 card. So all of these will be on the blog. You can get them super easy. Any questions I missed? Because I, I only looked every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you were trying to do that. Uh, Kathy Champion wants to know when are you going to announce the winner of the Brenda album? Um, I, th I think we do that in Cracker After Show today. Cool. I think that's right. I, my people are out there doing stuff. I don't know. <laughs> we, got, we got a pretty big announcement in Cracker After Show, too. Oh, we do? Pretty big. Okay, that's exciting. All right, if you've never been here before, after this show, we stop this and we start the second. We do a Crafter After Show. And I think today you're getting a face video. Oh, yeah. You're excited about that? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, after we hang out from this one, you give us about uh, five, ten minutes, and we'll be back on the Crafter After Show. We have a lot of stuff to show you guys, and we can talk more about what's been going on in our personal life. I know you want to know. But so many people are doing this card and want the information I didn't want to like drag on too much. I want to be able well, to get it. Does. Well, you know, live videos are hard to watch and I may end up having to go back and do one that's not live anyway. We'll see. I'm hoping that this one will help everybody. So we'll see if that works. All right, guys, we love you very much. We're going to head out. If you make a card doing this, we want to see it. Head over to our Facebook group or my favorite spot for you guys to load things is on our customer gallery because it gives inspiration for everyone when they come there and they don't have to have a Facebook to see it. I know that sounds crazy, but a lot of my viewers still don't have Facebook, and I totally get that because if it weren't for this, I wouldn't have one either, right? You know me. I don't really do Facebook much, but if you come to our website under the customer gallery, you don't even have to have a Facebook. So that's why we're encouraging you guys to do that lately, as well as the group. That's awesome. Do it in the group, too. But if you can post on the gallery, then everybody can see them. Kelly asked, are they going to be printable? No. Just photos. Just photos with your measurements. It'd be easy to make a printable. Okay. So you, when you decide what your card base is, spend the time making your template. You make one of these and you're just like, here's what I like to do. Take these guys, put them in either a folder or in uh, one of the, the scrapbook keepers. Or if you're like me, I would stick them on the wall somewhere. A craft keeper. <laughs> and I know the craft do. keepers are awesome for this. And then boom, you just pull this out. And all you have to do then is cut the square or the rectangle, sit this down, trace it, cut it, go. Measurements on the blog. I need to get off so y'all can know where everything is. On the blog, memememadeit.com. And if I do that, then you guys can uh, you can get to the blog real quick and go check out the measurements. I will come back this afternoon and add the A6 photo. So if you're wanting A6, let me hold it real still for a second because you might have to wait on that one for a minute. All right, guys, we're headed out to do the Crafter After Show. We got to make a set change, and we'll be right back. Love you guys. Have a great afternoon. See you shortly. Bye. Bye.